their wonderful response to my question. All right, we're going to start off with Andrea Glisic. How are you doing, Andrea? How are you feeling? I'm wonderful. How are you tonight? Feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good. Things are going very well. It's been a wonderful evening so far. Okay, here is your question. Andrea, how will you utilize your childhood experiences to further educate the children of the future? That's a great question. Um, I believe that children should experience childhood to their full extent. Um, I think we need to step away from technology and move towards building relationships with one another. So I think that children, uh, or I should say parents, need to take their children out to the park, need to go on play dates, uh, and need to experience what it's like to have friends instead of just going onto the computer and logging into their Facebook or whatever it is else that's out there. Um, I think that's probably one of the most important things that I would like to pass on to, to the future of children. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Very good advice. Hey, I took my daughter to the park today, so I think I'm right on track. That's great. All right, uh, Anastasia Frolov. Where is Anastasia? <laughs> Anastasia, how are you feeling tonight? I'm great, thank you. How are you? I'm very good. I'm glad uh, that I'm asking the questions and not answering. It's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. All right, Anastasia, why do you feel it is important to receive an education given the beliefs of your heritage? Thank you. I believe it is important to receive the education because most women from my heritage do not receive an education. They go on to different paths and they ignore that portion of it. And I think education empowers people and empowers women. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Anastasia. All right, next up is Dion Ng. Great, thank you very much. Okay, here we go. How does a dreamer, such as yourself, have an impact within your community? Being a dreamer, you are able to impact your community by following your dreams. You turn your dreams and you implement them. You use them and you share with your community to make your community a better place. It is very important for us to dream. Without dreams, we are not. Thank you. Next up is uh, Jessica Pereira, who I believe is way down here. Let me come back this way. How are you doing, Jessica? I'm doing great, thank you. Okay, here is your question. Through your fundraising efforts, what have you found to be the most rewarding? The most rewarding feeling that I've found through my fundraising efforts is the feeling of giving back to the community and giving back to others. I believe giving back to others and doing a good deed is my calling. I want to be a clinical psychologist and I want to do that for the rest of my life. And it's been such a rewarding really raising and helping the children at Variety and just helping others who I've raised money for in the past as well. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica Walsh. All right, keep the Walsh. Keep it down there. We need some exercise here today. All right, Keepa, uh, what is the ALS Society of Ontario, and why is it important to you to be the spokesperson for the ALS Society of Ontario? Well, ALS is a degenerative neuromuscular disease, and it affects the motor neurons of the brain. My father was actually diagnosed when I was quite young, and because of that, I've been involved in the ALS Society since I was 12 years old, running walks with my mom in Sudbury, and I think that it's so important because there is a cure, and one of the reasons for that is because there isn't enough awareness, really, in any community. So right now, the stats say that there should be two per 100,000, but in Sudbury alone, there's already 42 people there living, and there's only 170,000 people there. So we really need to get the awareness out, and uh, it's a pleasure for me to be a spokesperson. Thank you. Good job. Thank you, Keeper. I think our future's in pretty good hands. Just listen to these young ladies so far. Malti Chadari. Malti over here. How are you doing so far, Malti? Great. How are you? Doing real well. I'm really enjoying the answers to these questions. You guys are showing uh, amazing poise under stress, believe me. Okay, Malti, here is your question. How do you foresee your future journey should you become the next Miss World Canada? 
will thank you for seeing my journey because if I were to become Miss World Canada, it would give me a platform to raise awareness to all those beautiful women out there that think that they aren't capable and to bring their inner beauty out because a lot of people have been put down saying that they have nothing, they don't stand a chance and this would give me a platform to raise that awareness and show them that anything is possible and we all deserve it. And not only that, but it will also give me aware, like a platform to raise awareness for variety and to show people what variety does. Thank you. Great job. Thank you, Melty. All right, Melissa Muirhead. Melissa M. All right. You've got a rainbow of colors as far as evening gowns tonight, too. Very good job. You guys obviously talked and no one wanted to, no one wanted to duplicate. That's wonderful. Okay, Melissa, here is your question. Why do you feel it is important to teach the women of your community self-defense? And I'm going to stand back because I saw your act. I've been doing jiu-jitsu for the last six years, and it not only teaches respect, discipline, and confidence, but it also is very empowering. And being able to share that empowerment with women, the women that come into the dojo at the beginning are different than the women when they leave. And the confidence that they build throughout the sessions are just incredible and it's very um, contagious and it's actually um, a, started out as a grassroots and it's actually grown to um, repetitive women's self-defense classes for various charities, not only just variety. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. In the dojo, I love that, in the dojo. All right, Nalani Wakita. How are you tonight, Nalani? I'm pretty well, how are you? I'm doing great, thanks. Okay, now if you were crowned, Miss World Canada 2011, how would you show our true Olympic spirit to the world? If I was crowned Miss World Canada, to show our Olympic spirit, I would definitely bring out what we brought in Vancouver. Down in Robson Square, I was there probably every day, and it was amazing, all the people, the patriotism we have here, and I believe that Canada should have that, and have it all the time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nalani. All right, our uh, next contestant, Pooja Anand. How you doing, Pooja? Doing fine. You guys are doing great, as I've said. Okay, Pooja, here's your question. Well, what would the next chapter as the Miss World Canada 2011 Queen entail for you, should you win the crown? Thank you very much for the question. Hello and good evening, everyone. The next chapter that would entail me as being Miss World Canada 2011 tonight, I would be given the honor to spread all the confidence and beauty that we have in this world because I believe everyone has confidence in them. They just have to bring it out. Being national, being provincial, and locally, I can promote self-confidence, beauty, and positivity. By being in Miss World, I will be able to bring a strong platform for females and males and the world. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you for including the males, too, because we're, we're part of it. All right, Poonam Puni. Poonam, how are you tonight? Fine, thank you. Okay, now if you are crowned as Miss World 2011, Miss World Canada 2011, or Miss World, hey, why not think big? What is your game plan to acquire the most out of this title? Hello, everyone. Um, to begin off, my game plan is to create the awareness that there is a pageant that looks beyond just beauty. It looks inner, looks at all the women and their talents, their experiences, and brings up to a platform. Alongside with that, I would like to take Variety with me. Variety is a great charity that has helped millions of children and I truly believe that there is awareness that should be out there put out to our younger generation. Um, our younger generation has been sheltered because of the electronic age that we do have and I believe with this platform I would be able to create the awareness that is required today. Thank you. Okay, Priya Banerjee, Priya, right here. How are you, Priya? I'm wonderful, thanks, how are you? I think I'm pretty wonderful too, thanks for asking. All right, Priya, 
How do you plan on creating a stepping stone towards equality in the world? Thank you for the question. Um, as a Canadian myself, I think that's, uh, that's a very good question because I'm a Canadian and whenever I look around, I see so much diversity. I see so many cultures, so many traditions, different. we all live in peace and harmony together. And me being a Canadian can set an example to the world that, you know, everyone should be like us. We should live in peace and harmony despite of all our differences. Thank you. Thank you, Priya. And Risa Santos. Last, but certainly not least, here we are. Riza, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, how are you? I'm very good, thanks so much. All right, here's your question. Riza, why do you feel it is important to raise environmental awareness in our world? Good evening, everyone. I believe that it is extremely important to raise environmental awareness in our world. Coming from a background as the Coastal Protection Foundation president, um, I've worked alongside the Canadian International Development Agency and I've seen firsthand the oil spill in the island province of Gamaras and the international aid that Canada has brought forward. And working with CETA, I've also had the opportunities to work with local businesses in the Philippines and raising awareness on how to make fashion accessories environmentally friendly and bring them out on the international market in a green way so that it is prosperous not only for the local people, but also for the environment. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Lisa. Hey, how about a big hand for all 12 girls who did wonderfully under big pressure today. Okay, so it's uh, 12 semi-finalists. Right now, the judges are uh, tabulating scores. Okay, here they are, the five finalists in no particular order. Finalist number one, Dion Ng. Our second finalist, Keitha Walsh. Pooja Anand. Paid off to wear a red dress tonight, it appears. <laughs> Our fourth finalist, Poonam Puni. <laughs> and our fifth finalist, Riza Santos. Okay, so at this time, our five finalists will come to the podium and they will give us a prepared speech that they have prepared, hoping that they would make it to this moment. So we are going to start off with Dion Ng. Dion? Making this world a better place. When we accept ourselves for who we are, we are more open and understanding to the people around us. We are able to connect and accept them for who we are then we can show them kindness, love, and compassion. If we can all do that, there will be less pain, suffering, and war in this world. We all need to remember that, in the end, we are all the same. We are all human beings doing our best to live our life to the fullest. And that is why self-acceptance is the key in making this world a better place. Thank you.